Hi everybody. Um, thanks for watching this. Um, I mean, to participate to, to, to this meeting. Um, to the, the first topic to the agenda today is about Jenkins infrastructure Docker images. I'm not sure if it's Daniel or um, Damien, uh, if it's Damien or Garrett who put that topic to the agenda. But basically, the idea is to build a specific Docker, a Terraform Docker images that we could use inside of the Jenkins infrastructure project. Yeah, it sounds like it's Damien. Um, I don't think there is anything um, important to say here. Um, basically, the idea, this is something that I dis discussed with Damien last week. Um, the idea is if we need a specific Docker image, that's fine. We can publish it on the Jenkins Infra Docker Hub organization, as long as we don't put credentials anyway, which is something that we should avoid. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think there is anything important here. Um, and since Damien is not there to elaborate the topic, I propose that we continue to the, to the next topic. Um, something that I've been thinking of our past week is what's the current status of Confluence. Um, we are still hosting the wiki, um, even if um, I don't think anybody is still using the wiki content. So I, I would, what I would like to do is I would like to keep the Apache service running in front of Confluence, but I would like to stop the, the container or I can okay. Yes, sorry. We, uh, I, would, I would lobby strongly against that if only because I've got data that says that it's still very actively read by okay. Google search engines and by human beings. So um, uh, Gavin Mogan actually created a, um, a metrics collector that extracts from the logs and I've been collecting it now for the like the last six or eight months. And, and I, can, I can give you some data. I could, I could get it together for either our next meeting or for for a few, or I can send it by email to show which pages are still being accessed. But we've got many pages that are being hit hundreds of times a day still. So so basically, my fear is it's becoming a snowflake. Nobody's updating Confluence. It's a service that is not updated, running in our infrastructure connected to, to our LDAP service. And so the idea is, if we are planning to maintain and to keep it inside our infrastructure, then we should uh, find some times to. to to correctly update to correctly update it. The good thing is I don't think um, we have major limitation to update the service. We haven't worked on Confluence over the past year because we knew that we wanted to, to, to transfer the Jira to the Linux Foundation. Um, this is maybe something that we could also do if uh, we know that we still rely on Confluence, but we don't want to maintain it anymore. But anyway, you know, as a short term solution, I think that we could just uh, update the image and um, yeah, and find some time okay. to work on it. But okay. I, 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 yeah, oh, sorry. So is your concern with, for because the service is read only to 99% or more of the users, I wasn't overly concerned about even doing an update. We've been we've been actively moving content, but we did use hack hack events to do that, like Hacktoberfest and uh, UI UI Meetup. But we've still got a lot of content that we need to move out of that thing. Um, I guess we could we could conceivably extract it and make it just an Apache server serving static pages. I just don't know how to do that with a conf Confluence server without spending a lot of energy. So, so the, the reason why I would be interested to either keep maintaining Confluence or stop the service is because from time to time you have security vulnerabilities. So for instance, last year, uh, beginning of September, there was one where it was possible to read the content of every files on the machine, including a file containing password and these kind of things. While I'm not aware of such vulnerabilities at the moment, I also know that if we don't update that machine on a regular basis, we are vulnerable to this kind of um, issues. So even if uh, the service is now in read-only mode, um, I don't trust the service if we are not updating it on a regular basis, which we haven't uh, for Confluence. So the thing is, either either we decide to keep maintaining and we we, I mean, we keep monitoring it or we just stop the service. Um, the reason why I was just suggesting to stop the service is because I know that we still have many URLs that are targeting um, that endpoint, but then we redirect um, those requests to the plugin side, for instance. So what I was suggesting is we could just keep 
the, um, the, conf the, the, the Apache service as a front end, and we would just allow people to access confluence but let's say with an ssh gateway or whatever or from the vpn or whatever so the idea was just to still provide the service but we would stop um having it available from the wide from the internet so that's why wow. i was suggest suggesting um what's that okay so so it feels like what what you're saying is we really do need a plan to get off of confluence And if we can't get off, get off of confluence, then we need a plan to know how we maintain it. Um, but yeah, we can't, we, can't we can't just keep running the current way. Right, okay. So so up to now, the the primary value of that site, at least for the docs effort, for the docs SIG effort, has been that it, it includes documentation that exists nowhere else. And, and we've migrated some of that to Jenkins.io, but the migration process is non-trivial because much of it is outdated and we can't just vanilla copy it. Okay. Um, so Olivia, that's, why I put, that's why I put the Docker and Apache that you can remove from the notes. Okay, got it. I just wanted to keep that in mind. Okay. You were saying? I, I was going to offer, would it be okay if we, just like we did the JIRA project, we do a Confluence migration project and let's, let's bring a proposal bring hoist it to the community sure. discuss what it should be sure because i i know we don't want to we don't want to make it re read write again that that is a, a a time sink we just don't want a plan like the jira plan yeah there are, there are many things that we learn about using wiki in the, at the scale of the jenkins project and we definitely don't want to have it um readable right. from people is it is it okay if since since i chair the doc sig is it okay if i take that as my responsibility to pr propose a, a confluence migration plan sure sure I, I here i just want to to bring the topic on the table so we have we identify what need to be done so right. yeah, feel free to All discuss right. that there Excellent. So next topic, uh, unless someone has question on this one particularly, next topic is about um, the Azure storage uh, issues we had almost a month ago. So um, what we did after the outage, we temporarily were running get a Jenkins.io on, on, on the different machines. And what I did over the last weekend was to just redirect the DNS traffic to the Kubernetes cluster. So the Azure file storage issue has been solved. Um, the only thing is right now, we don't know. I mean, Azure support wasn't able to provide us the information about why we got that issue um, and how to prevent that issue to happen again in the future. Um, basically, they just explained us the root cause, like um, we are limited to maximum 2,000 open file at the same time. Um, so we were probably affected by a file leaks somewhere. Um, what I find strange is that service has been running since March last year. And I don't understand, I still don't understand what changed uh, one month ago. But yeah, at least for the time being, we reverted the service. So now the traffic is running to the communities cluster, communities cluster again. Um, and, I, and we'll try to monitor this one. Um, at least the good things from this outage is that we put in place few things in order to catch these kind of issues in the future. So we now monitor if we can download packages. So we have an alert that can be triggered if um, the latest package is not available for more than 30 minutes. Um, that's one of the things that we put in place. We also deploy a status page, status.jenkins.io. So the reason to that was we realized that during the outage, it was, it was quite difficult to communicate about the ongoing, uh, the ongoing outage. So this time now we have a status page where we would publish any information uh, related to an outage or Windows maintenance or whatever. Um, so 
right now it's contained most of the information so feel free to look at it and provide feedback um any question no then uh let's talk about the next topic um which is the um, so the Jenkins infra slash charts um, repository. So this is the, J, the the Git repository used to manage the Kubernetes cluster. Um, we identified few issues, especially specifically over the past week. Past week, the first one is we are having a hard time to identify when uh, a release of, uh, an update is failing. Um, we, I mean, th this is display um, in the job but we are still trying to identify how we can be how we can detect that so um, a similar approach is for the puppet code when puppet does an update on one of our machine we will receive a notification in rc saying that that machine was updated let's say um, um confluence machine was updated this is not something that we have right now we have to, to connect on um, a specific service to fetch that information um, so that's one of the issues. The second issue um, is about testing. Um, until today, we easily rely on me testing any changes. Um, this is something that does not work anymore because we have more and more people contributing to the Git repositories. So we are thinking about ways to, to test uh, the different changes. So the same, if you have any suggestions here, um, they are more than welcome. Um, right now, the first test that we put in place was to do some to run some linting tests on YAML files. Um, this already catch some errors, but obviously not all of them. But uh, yeah, if you have suggestions here, that would be nice. And the third element that 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 we have issues over the past few weeks is the way we deploy. Um, the way we deploy the Jenkins, uh, the way we manage a cluster, we run basically M5 from a Jenkins job every 30 minutes, and we activated the multi-branch pipeline. So what we did was to run the same command from all the Git branches on um, on that Git repositories. Um, so we we have some old branches that we still have to work on and so basically we were running um we are using a tool called update CLI to update every versions and so we were updating based on old configurations so based on ham v2 configuration so that's why we saw many prs that were open in a git repository to instead of upgrading the version it tried to downgrade to old um ham charts version this is something that we are working on so basically what we would like to do is to only build um, the master branch and build the pull request branch um, so this is something that we are looking at right now so the result of that is to not to carefully review prs right now um, if you detect anything, that's the right time to, to report them and to not, you know, yeah, just to pay attention, basically. Um, any question until here? So, Olivier, I, I had a, I've been exploring Oracle Cloud and was wondering, is it would it be reasonable if I were to attempt to construct a prototype version of the Jenkins Kubernetes cluster on a completely different cloud, is that safe that I could do that? Or is no, that's really not safe and, and I, I should not even consider it. I was thinking just for an experiment, experimental basis, not a, not a, not a production thing. I'm just thinking, is it, is it a safe thing to do? Or no, I should avoid doing that kind of thing even as a, as a test. So, so basically what I fear specifically for the Oracle cloud is we don't really have credit cards. So either we are having sponsoring or we need to ask money from the Linux Foundation. So we need a process with the Linux Foundation to pay the-, the, the Yeah, and, and I'm, in, I'm in their trial period right now, so it's free. So, and I, it's got my card, so I don't mind, that part I don't mind. The financial side of it, I'm not at all concerned about. I was more concerned about any threat to, to safety or reliability if I were to attempt to run a, 
uh, attempt to stand up my own cloud, my own Kubernetes cluster on a completely different cloud using our definitions? Um, no, as long as you try to be sure that those are not, um, those are correctly configured. Um, maybe, maybe we can review the cluster together uh, once it's in place before we deploy the resources. But otherwise, um, I don't have any major concern. Basically, my, my, my biggest concern at the moment is if we decide to switch to, to Oracle, what the billing workflow would be. Um, yeah, and, and I'm, I'm not anywhere near ready to, to, to go further with that yet. I th I'm still just curious, will it even work? So yeah, I agree that this was more of a, a, a try and exploratory prototype with something that someone's offered, offered money that we can use freely for the during this trial period and then throw it away. Okay. So I, I'm doing something very similar on Google at the moment. Ah, okay. okay, okay. Um, yeah. So I've taken uh, what config I could find from CI Jenkins, Dio, and um, was it Tim or Alex's PR um, to convert it into a Kubernetes based cluster? Um, I've had to like uplift some of that. Um, um, since that PR was originally created, but it seems to be deploying. Um, I think the, the biggest issue I'm having at the moment is uh, around secrets and trying not to obviously uh, push to take any secrets from their current system or uh, push anything up. So, um, but it is allowing me to test out um, the just sort of JCASC and job DSL config to correctly apply all the traits that we need to run to do that master branch and pull requests um, stuff. It's, it's quite a good test bed at the moment. So if you if you want to if you want me to show you what I've done, Mark, um, I can do that at any point. So, yeah. Sure, I would be interested. Yeah, that would be as well. Me too. That would be great. So thanks, Gareth. Yes, I, I would love to love to have that discussion, and maybe we we record it and talk through the talk through the topics. Excellent. Thanks. Back to you, Olivia. Thank, thank for okay. excuse the side trip. Um, the next topic is about RC stable releases. But since Tim is not here, I think I will just briefly explain what I'm working on here, and then uh, wait for Tim to be there. So basically, I would like to build a release candidate directly from release.ci. The limitation that I have right now is to use which Maven repository to use. So apparently I'm supposed to use the snapshots Maven repository on repo.jenkinsia.org. Um, something that, that annoys me is it uses a slightly different um, version naming pattern. Um, also, I'm wondering if we should build and publish distribution packages for the Earth really stable, uh, the release candidate um, version. Um, right now, when you go to get the Jenkins.io, we can see that we published those for the WAR file, but we don't publish those for the Debian Red Hat's use. What I'm wondering is, is it because the, the release candidate was triggered by um, Oliver Gonza? And he didn't have the, um, the correct credentials to sign the Red Hat and the Debian package, or is it, or is there any other reason? Um, my guess is just because of credentials, GPG key, and code signing certificates. But um, we could easily build and publish them from the, re the release.ci. But yeah, I'm just, I'm just gathering some information at the moment. Um, I created um, a Jira to get, so I'll probably post it on the Jenkins release um, RC channel. Yeah, as far as I know, as far as I know, it is only because he did not have permissions. But I don't, I don't know if there's anything compelling about making the release candidates available in the packages, because practically speaking, I don't know who's going to test if the number of people who actually test the release candidates is dismayingly small. 
based on feedback from the mailing list and they all use the war file. So I, I wouldn't, I have, I see no harm in doing it, but I would not worry about doing it or make it a critical piece of the delivery, at least based on what I've seen of Oliver's responses to Oliver's past calls for testing of the release candidate. My only fear is I don't want to have a really big difference, uh, the, the, a major different procedure to do a release candidate than we would have for a stable or a weekly. So if we can reuse the same process, that would be perfect. And, and in that case, then it sounds like it's much better to go with, yes, let's deliver the DEB, the RPM and the MSI. I assume we would ignore the Docker images because they're outside of the workflow. But but those that that for me makes a perfect sense then. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Um, then let's move to the last topic um, of today's agenda, which is Jenkins release. So today we did another weekly release. Everything went well. Um, as again, uh, we have we have a dashboard, a data dashboard that we can use to, to track that information. Um, I, I'll put the link in the notes after the meeting. But basically, what what I'm multi monitoring there is I'm fetching from the Maven repository, so the Maven metadata.xml. I'm looking at what's the latest version. Let's say the version two point two hundred seventy one, and then based on that version, um, I try to download Debian Red Hat War windows files from get.jenkins.io and if i can download that version from get.jenkins.io then it means that they are available and because there is a gap between the moment we release to the maven repository and the moment we publish those artifacts those packages it's around 20 to 30 minutes right now we have an alarm that that is triggered only after 30 minutes so if something goes wrong after 30 minutes, then we get notified about the fact that the latest release hasn't been uh, pushed. And so if we look at the data bug dashboard, it's only one or zero. So um, most of the time it should be one, except that if the, the, the latest version cannot can't be downloaded, then it's a zero value. Um, yeah, I don't know if you have the link. I put the link in, in that uh, in RC, but I, I do. I'll, I'll paste it in later. Absolutely, I do. I, I don't want to disturb my my windows lest I pop something on screen that's sensitive. Okay, perfect. Um, otherwise, I think we cover everything for today. Yeah, but the most important one. Um, I propose to not have a Jenkins Info meeting next week and the week after. Um, so, yeah. Objections from anyone? I mean, it doesn't mean that nobody will be on the chat. Um, it's just like we don't break major services, or at least we try to avoid that. And uh, we just respect that not everybody will be responsible, responsive over the next two weeks. So that's the other thing. Then, um, any other question? I'm going to count to three, one. Two, three, thanks for your time and see you on RC. Bye-bye.